Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good today. So I'm here with the podcast. I know I have been getting a lot of requests to talk about the whole Juice World situation. This one really hurt. Okay, Um, I showed you guys the text message between me and my oldest son on Instagram. He's the one who texted me while I was in Texas um, and let me know about his passing. (laughs) I had been out partying all night and I woke up and, you know, that was the first text I saw. And he's like, did you hear about Juice World?" I'm literally like, I'm just waking up. And, you know, he told me he had a seizure. I died at 21. Now, I'm a fan of Juice World's music. I've used his music before in my highlight stories. Lucid Dreams was my song. My song I've been banging recently is the uh, song Bandit that he has with NBA Youngboy. I like both of them. I like NBA Youngboy's music. Now, he gets on my nerves. His mom is kind of ratchet, but he makes some good music. So when they collaborated, I was here for a bitch, okay? Because I don't need no Molly to be savage. When I'm on that Molly, I feel savage. I'm the definition of a bad bitch. Man, that is my jam. I'm just like shook right now because this young boy was 21 years old and we talked about it on Instagram, the power of the tongue, okay? Talked about it in his song called Legends and he was basically saying like, you know, what's the point of the 27 Club when a lot of his industry friends are not even making it to be 21? What's the 27? And if you guys don't know, he just turned 21 a few days ago, and he was flying to Chicago to celebrate his 21st birthday with his family and friends. So this entire situation is sad. A lot of people are hurting right now. He is not a mumble rapper. His music is like, it's just really melodic. He had his own style, the way he flowed. You could understand his lyrics. Like, I loved listening to his music because he wasn't like the typical, you know what I'm saying, mushmouth rapper that we've become accustomed to. Like, I really enjoyed his music. I always felt like there was like a melancholy feel to him. Like, he was going through a lot of like, you know, deep stuff and he put into his music. You know, he was having a lot of, you know, issues with females and stuff like that. But um, I really liked him. But unfortunately, there's this whole drug culture. And that's the part, you know, I don't try and knock these young people because they're not saying anything that we weren't listening to in the 90s, you know, with Snoop and and Pac and all them talking about, you know, liquor and and, um, smoking weed and all that stuff. But this new generation is definitely heavy into like the Mollies, the Perks, the Zans and... Hey, bitch, a little punk in this shit, man. I just hit a million and we selling brain with a Zan cake, bitch. Ask it! (laughs) This how you cut a Zan cake. Mm. Go all the way down. Shut your bitch ass up, Troy. <laughs> Shut your bitch ass up. Troy, you's a bitch. Don't tell me what to do, nigga. <laughs> yeah, you know what we doing, dog. Going red on that waffles, man. You know how we rock. Young bonds running around cross niche. You know, it makes me sad that a lot of these rappers rap about that stuff, but it's obvious that's what a lot of these kids on in this generation are going through. It's like they're they're even though they're connected and they're part of this microwave society and they have so much at their fingertips, technology, and now you don't need to suck the industry's dick to make it. You literally can make it, you know, putting your music on SoundCloud and just creating your own fan base. But even with all of that, A lot of these kids are not happy. A lot of these kids are going through a lot of like emotional turmoil. And the only way that they're able to basically release some of that stress and pressure is through these powerful drugs. Okay. And it just makes me sad because when he had the seizure, that's the first thing I thought is, you know, it has to be that lean. Coming from somebody who suffers from a chronic illness and who has to have pain medication, it makes me sad when I see young people abusing it because I take some of the same medications, but I literally take a teaspoon, okay, a teaspoon, okay, in an eight-hour period, and I know how loopy it makes me feel, so I can't believe that some of these young kids are literally taking the whole bottle, they're pouring it with Sprite, and then you figure they're adding liquor to it. This is a recipe for disaster. How many more young people do we have to lose to this type of stuff? You know, it's sad that a whole generation of artists, and not just artists, these are the ones who are famous, but there's a whole generation of kids out here who are losing their lives to Zans and Perks and Lean and everything else. 
it's really sad and it's really you know like that hit hard because I'm a parent and my kids put me on to him so it's just like why wow, I just can't believe that because he made such good music and it's really sad that a lot of his music I feel was like a cry for help so now there's even more information coming out about what happened his final moments and what's going on with his entourage so if you guys do not know, he was flying on a private jet. So he wasn't like on American Airlines or Delta or nothing like that. He was on a private jet. And so, and there's video of him in the jet with his homeboys. They're kicking it, having fun. And for some reason, the police got tipped off that they felt like this private jet had a lot of contraband, drugs and guns. So supposedly they got tipped off. So when they landed on the tarmac, the Chicago police were waiting for them. So what ended up happening is that once they got there, they started going through all their baggage and all their luggage. And they ended up finding over 70 pounds of marijuana. They also found guns and everything else. So I'm going to go ahead and read to you guys the article really quick. It says Chicago rapper Juice World suffered convulsions and went into cardiac arrest as police and federal agents were searching his and his entourage's luggage for guns and drugs at a private hangar at Midway Airport over the weekend, according to police. The officers and agents had been waiting at the Atlantic Aviation Hangar at Midway earlier Sunday because they suspected the private plane from Los Angeles carrying the 21-year-old musician was carrying contraband, the police said. As they were going through two carts of luggage, the rapper, whose real name is Jared Higgins, began convulsing and going into a seizure. The police sources said an agent administered two doses of Narcan, which is an emergency treatment when opioid overdose is suspected. The paramedics took him to Advocate Christ Medical Center in Oakland, where he was pronounced dead at 3.14 a.m. about an hour after he landed in Chicago. An autopsy is scheduled for Monday. The search turned up 41 vacuum sealed bags of marijuana, six bottles of prescription codeine cough syrup, two 9mm pistols, a 40 caliber pistol, a high capacity ammunition magazine, metal piercing bullets, according to police. Two guards with Higgins were charged with illegally possessing the guns and ammunition. No drug charges had been filed. The police said the marijuana and the codeine were found in bags that had no name tags. Sources said the investigation is continuing. Then it also goes on to say this it is unknown why the federal agents were waiting for the plane a two-engine Gulfstream jet owned by the company in Longwood Florida in Longwood Florida the plane flew from Fort Pierce Florida to Van Nuys California on Saturday then on to Midway arriving around 1 30 a.m. Higgins was scheduled to play at Rolling Loud Festival in Los Angeles this coming Saturday Chicago police said that they were notified while the plane was en route to Midway that federal agents suspected it was carrying weapons and narcotics plainclothes tactical and gang crime officers joined the agents at the hangar as the plane landed and the 10 passengers including Higgins and his girlfriend entered the lobby along with two pilots and a steward the police said a drug sniffing dog made a positive alert for bags on two luggage carts the police said searches uncovered the marijuana and codeine one of the guards henry dean told police he was carrying two nine millimeter pistols and a high capacity magazine a third gun a 40 caliber pistol and found a camera case containing personal effects belonging to the other guard christopher long but he denied the gun was his around that time higgins began having seizures according to to the sources police asked his girlfriend if he had any medical issues or had ingested any drugs she replied that higgins did not have any medical conditions but that he had taken perks and had a drug problem police said perks contained acetophetamine and oxycodone and opioid an ambulance was called while the Narcon was administrated. Later, Lang was charged with unlawful possession of a firearm. Dean was charged with carrying a concealed firearm at an airport, possessing a high-capacity magazine and metal-piercing bullets, the police said. Dean had a permit to carry the gun in Illinois, but weapons are banned from airports. The charges are misdemeanors. The police said that the state attorney office rejected felony charges for the two of them. So that's what's being reported. And to tell you the truth, I think what caused him to have a seizure is one, they're being stopped by the police. So somebody tipped the police off for the police to be sitting there waiting. So I don't know if it was the, you know, the, the pilot, somebody on the plane, the stewardess, but somebody tipped somebody off because the police is just not going to be waiting at the airport for these people to land. Him and his entourage have been caught with 70 pounds of marijuana, codeine, guns, and everything else. We don't know the entourage like that, okay? All we know is Juice World. So, 
once that arrest becomes public, it's going to be his name's drug through the paper, Juice World arrested at the airport. He's a drug smuggler. You know, just that alone is enough to cause you stress. You know, it's one thing to be arrested in private. It's another thing for everything to be that you do to be blasted to the world. So I think not only the drugs, but the added stress of the situation compiled with the drug use is what caused him to go into a seizure and eventually kill him. So the whole situation is just really sad. And even in the song Legends, he says he's been going through paranoia and he always has to keep a gun on him. Hence why the two bodyguards were there with all those guns. So, you know, if this is not, you know what I'm saying, words manifesting themselves and coming to life, I don't know what is. But the whole situation is sad. It's really sad that at 21 years old, such a talented young man has lost his life. And I hope, once again, this is a wake-up call to people in the industry. Nobody's invincible. Nobody's immune. And those drugs will take a toll on your body, especially when you're misusing them. They take a toll on my body, and I'm following the fucking rules. You feel me? I'm going off of what it says on the bottle from the doctor, the the, the prescription amount. And and I, I feel it taking a toll on my body. You feel me? So when you're drinking an entire bottle of codeine, when you're popping, you know what I'm saying, 10 pills at a time, when you're only supposed to take two in a 24-hour period, you are causing your body to deteriorate even faster. So when you come across stressful situations or a situation that is stressful that, that normally you would be able to handle because you haven't been abusing your body, your body goes into shock. It doesn't know how to deal with the extra stress and anxiety. And because you're on drugs and you're, you know, abusing drugs, it's hard for your body to know what to do in those situations and it ends up being an overload. So I think that's really what caused his death is the drug use and the stress of that arrest. I mean, you're talking about the feds are right there in front of them. They all know they're riding dirty. The whole entourage knows they're riding dirty. But he knows that he's going to be the one blamed for everything. So the whole situation is crazy. But I think this is going to cause the police to really ride down on a lot of these celebrities that are riding around in private planes. Because what they were doing is drug trafficking. Okay, that wasn't, you know, a, a 20 ounce. Okay, that wasn't a QP, honey. That was 70 pounds of weed. There's no way that you need to, there's no way you can smoke 70 pounds of weed in a weekend. I don't give a fuck who you are. So somebody was drug trafficking. Somebody was, you know what I'm saying, moving shit from coast to coast. So trust and believe there's going to be some new regulations. They're going to be, the hip hop police is going to jump on this and they're going to start searching everybody's planes. Anytime something like this goes down, shit rolls downhill. And trust and believe, these rappers better get in line. They better know who's carrying what, what's being brought on. Because you will be charged with federal crimes for drug trafficking. That is very serious. And they're still investigating. What they're going to do is start running fingerprints on all those bags to see who all handled those bags. And if it's other people's fingerprints on those bags, on those duffel bags and everything else, outside of Juice World, because they can't charge him because he's deceased, they will probably charge the other people whose prints come up on those bags, unless they were all wearing gloves. But, you know, so this whole situation is crazy, but there's definitely going to be some changes to be had. Because, again, you know, a lot of these celebrities, they fly private jets, they hire, you know, private people to fly them around. But when you're talking about 70 pounds of marijuana and, you know, coding and everything else, honestly, if they wanted weed, they could have just flew to Chicago and been able to, you know what I'm saying, get their weed in Chicago. There's no reason for them to bring 70 pounds of weed to another state unless you're planning on, you know what I'm saying, selling those drugs and you're trafficking the drugs, basically. Because they can get weed in Chicago. You can get damn weed anywhere. So they were moving drugs. That's what it boils down to. And I think the stress of that you know, is what caused them to go into a seizure. So this entire situation is very heartbreaking. At the end of the day, these are young people. You know, some of these kids are young enough to be my kids. You know what I'm saying? So I try not to judge them too harshly because, again, we were all young. We've all made mistakes, you know. And, you know, by the grace of God, a lot of us were able to bounce back from our mistakes, learn from our mistakes, and were able to see another day. Unfortunately, his chapter is ended, but his music will always live on. And I am proud to say I'm a fan of his music. I'm a fan of his work. And it's just sad that this is how his chapter ended. Anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, let me know what your favorite Juice World song was and how do you guys feel about this. And um, last but not least, do you agree with 
with me that um, the police will definitely be cracking down on a lot more celebrity private planes now that all of this has come to light that they were caught with 70 pounds of marijuana. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right. Deuces. having a good time. I want to say thank you for coming and being positive. I appreciate every single last one of my fans. If it wasn't for y'all, I wouldn't be where I'm at. We love you, Joe! You know what I'm saying? Woo! Um, the last thing that I wanted to say was, I know everybody in this building has dreams and aspirations that they're trying to reach. And I'm here to tell you that if you give it your all, and you put in the work, you're going to get exactly where you want to be in life. Shit. Like if you, you don't gotta remember a damn thing I ever say, but please, please remember that. You can do anything you put your mind to. And don't let anybody bring you down. Don't let anybody discourage you. Don't let anybody put negative energy in your life. Don't let anybody take your soul. Don't let anybody interfere with what you got going on. And if somebody got a problem with that, don't even get mad. You know what I'm saying? All you gotta do is say, suck my dick!